DNA Video Productions is a full-service video producer with a fleet of drones, 4K, and HD cameras, as well as a crew of video operators. We handle commercial and residential real estate videos, as well as events for promotional purposes. We create book trailers, both live action and running stills, music videos, and website videos. We also film series shorts for online distribution and are currently involved in filming a political parody. We specialize in low-cost movie making. Call DNA Video Productions at 941-748-6865 or visit our website at www.dnavideoproductions.com. That's www.dnavideoproductions.com. Thank you. Our sponsor this month is Published, an affiliate of Village Voices. Published offers all author services from writing tips, critiques, manuscript evaluations, and editing, as well as tips to help you become published. If you prefer to self-publish, purchase the step-by-step -step book on publishing through Amazon, or purchase services a la carte, from formatting to creating custom covers or even tips to gather endorsements. The staff is headed by two professional writers. After your books are published, either trade paper, electronically, or both, purchase marketing tips, web services, book trailers, or turn your book into an audiobook. Publish provides all your writing, publishing, and marketing needs. So give them a call at 941-748-6865. Contact them online at dgould 497 at AOL.com or go to the website at www.publishedavillagevoices.webs.com. Welcome to Culture Coast. The intro you just heard was by Al Musitano, and today we are talking to author Rick Betancourt. He has outsold everybody in our writing group <laughs> with, his, <laughs> with, with his books. So we're going to get started and find out where it all began. Hi, Rick. Hi, Donna. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, when did you first start writing? When did you find a love for the oh, words? Oh, God. Probably when I was in grammar school. I remember my neighbor passed away at an untimely age of uh, pancreatic cancer. And You mean very young? Uh, well, to me, he was old. Right. You were <laughs> but, a kid. I was a kid. But he was in his 40s. And it really affected me. He was a very integral part of our neighborhood. So to sort of get through that and understand what had happened, I wrote a little story about it and about his family that was left behind. He was Probably. a father? He was a father. And he had several kids. Were his kids friends of yours? Yes. yes. So that's they're still all, friends of mine, yeah. And so that's all the more reason yeah, for Yeah, so it, it was how to, sort of dealing with that how death. they How they acted with losing their father, too, mm. and, and mm. you th realizing mortality. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And... And as you say that, and I, I, um, a lot of the writing I do to this day, there's usually death involved. Some, it's some aspect of it. In Tim on Broadway, his mother passed away prior to the opening scene, um, and he's sort of dealing with the ramifications of that. And in um, your newest Carolyn's turn, there's a. And in Carolyn's death, turn, there's an earlier her father passed away. And there was also um, some. Person, some other person who had passed away. Yes, yes. She was um, sort of ridiculed in school when she was a large person in school, in, in high school, and was ridiculed for that. And one of the uh, bullies. One of the bullies passed, passed away. away. And yeah. then you had another death in there of somebody who just died under a tree. 
yes. very quickly. Yes, so yes. you had quite a few deaths. There was there were quite a few. We're deaths, talking yeah. about his new book that is not yet out, Carolyn's is, Turn. Yeah. But we are. He is working on that, and it should be out this year or next. Uh, that's a good question. I'd like to know myself. <laughs> okay. It probably won't be till next year. Oh, it might year, even be the year after. It if, may not be if you're yeah. picked up by yeah. an agent. Yeah. So right now I'm looking into traditional agent publishing. Uh, publishing. And that, then it could be two to three years. It could be a while. Yes. Yeah. But that's been a, a passion of mine that I've been working on for several years, as you know, <laughs> through the writers group, uh, bringing it in here. But um, but yeah, I never really thought of it until you mentioned it that there's. I'm always writing about death. <laughs> but it's I try to look at it in a, in a positive way. It, a lot of people never, ever recognize it. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned that, we have another writer in the group who's talking about her own issues with oh, mortality, yes. Yes. which are really, really Laura's intense. Yeah, intense. Laura's very, very, very intense. intense. Yeah, I can't I think, wait until she's published like an interview her because it's I, amazing. I know, I can't book. wait to read it. It's, it's really, she's, 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 she's incredible. So you, you had this early story. Now, did you give it to school? What did you do with it? You know, I um, it was kind of a personal thing. I think I read it to my mother, and, you know, she was moved by it. And then it just sort of went in the shelf. And and throughout school, I've always written little things. Articles um, and stories. Were they fiction or nonfiction, most of them? I've written a little bit of both throughout the years, anyway. You know, I st- jumping forward several years, I started writing a blog more about my personal life. I'm going to really get into the blog, okay. but we're going to put that one off just a little bit. So you get through high school and you're still writing little things. Did little you write the paper? Did I you did write the class? I did not. No contests? No, no. Okay, then on to college. <laughs> yeah, college I, was, you... college I was in a psychology major. So other than papers... And well, you write like a lot that. of papers in psychology. <laughs> mm, yes, did a lot of papers and I was also a computer science minor. So um, nice. kind of a weird No, but they're both mix. very good they're both very good places to make money. Well, there's not so much money in the psychology side of it unless you continue on and get your yeah. doctorate, but the it, it helps a lot in side issues, knowing having, how to, to deal with people. Yeah. Especially in computers cuz well, well, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. that's where I ended up having a career was in was using that little minor that I had ended up becoming science. my my career was in IT for a number of years. Right. And it was a very luc- lucrative career. Mm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you did well and you're still very young and you have retired. Um to an extent. To an extent. I mean, I came down here to Florida with the intent on focusing on writing. So that, and, and that's uh, your second career. Uh, yeah, because it's something you always career. enjoyed doing. Now, what what got you started on the first book that you wrote? The, um, the first, well, coincidentally, the first book that I started writing is Carolyn's Turn, which I started, gosh, years ago. Years ago, I hate to say how long ago, um, and then sort of shelved in it, and it has gone through literally probably twenty versions. Okay. It, at one point, it was. I started it, and um, then you learn more about writing, uh, well, the, yeah, art, the art of writing, the craft of writing. Of yes, writing. yes. It started. Carolyn Stern started as an idea for a sitcom, or not a sitcom, but like a HBO sort of series thing. And I actually wrote the screenplay for it, and almost a little bit of like Ally McBeal was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Maybe like an hour drama m- and drama comedy, comedy mixed comedy. Up yep, together. Yeah, exactly. it, it does have that feel to it. Yeah, I, I, the screenplay I, after getting it done it just I, I did not like it at all and shelf that so and, you wrote it in, in, as then, a screenplay yep and then turned it into a novel now how did you learn about screenplay writing did you take I took any a couple courses? courses yeah okay yeah. Where, uh, up north or down here in, in Cambridge Massachusetts okay yeah. so you took some courses because you were interested but they were just they were side things not your main job and no. you're continuing on doing continuing your IT and taking a little course IT, here and there yep, and, and working and, and, and um, then in your afternoon evening time doing a little bit of the studying and early morning I would wake up four or five in the morning and write for a couple of hours and then and take, take the, the courses in the evening <laughs> and courses in the evening and, yep and a lot and learning a lot online that was when the internet started coming out I know, and, you know there was a lot of information how you could things get. have changed in, in our capability Immensely. of learning mm-hmm. so even if you don't have a local writers group there are some online groups they're not as interactive no. and you don't get the same feedback but no. it's it's still a chance for those who haven't 
yeah. got local groups to get yeah. involved with. And I was involved in a, in a local group uh, up in Massachusetts that was very helpful and more supportive. It was very small. It was just like really three, four friends of us that had an interest in writing and would get together. And, um, and that's where Carolyn's Turn really started becoming a novel. Rather than a screenplay. Rather than you a screenplay. You switched over directions. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's nice. Now, so you ca- what, what year did you hit Florida? Um, I came to Florida in 2013. All right, so early, early retirement, because you're very young still. You decided you were going to write. You came down with your husband? With my husband, yep. Okay, and what, is he doing the same thing, or is no, he working? No, Chris is a nurse. Uh, well, oh, he's so not they a can nurse, work. I'm sorry. He's going to school to be, that's some the conversation we had the other night, so okay. it's stuck in my head. He's a respiratory therapist. He's in the okay. medical field. but he's And the medical considering... field, you can be anywhere, and more yes. so in Florida than anywhere. I yes. We've got Florida's such an great. elderly oh, yeah. so group. In, that... And he was, both of us up north were very career focused and just so consumed with work and you know how it is 60 right. hour work weeks and you come home and you're cleaning the house for the dog so the dog can have and a you, nice house and you <laughs> you worked in your field long enough in computer it that you became you you have a retirement fund basically that you could afford to try your hand at writing yeah so you um, you we, took we, a leap but at the same leap, time you've got we, a bridge a, something to fall back on it, it, yeah it took us a while to be able to create that we we actually had a place down here that we had owned before so we decided you know what we could sell everything we have in massachusetts and just go live in our little home in without Florida. huge overhead without a huge with yeah with no with little to no overhead and which gave and you the opportunity to the explore opportunity, yeah. your writing but before we had left i did publish and had had gone into the um, Amazon world and was exploring that, and that was really. What did you publish helpful. up in? Up I published a book of short stories called "Not Sure Boys," which was a little spin not on not not, which was kind of a, a spin on the North Shore of Massachusetts, which is where I grew up. So the North Shore Boys. So it's a it's stories about LGBT characters that are set in the North Shore of Massachusetts. I published that. In now, was that an erotica or was it just no, a regular no, story? No, short story. stories. Okay. Short stories. I published that in 2013. I'm trying to recall if we had decided to move to Florida before that or, or not, but um, I just had, before you came down here. It was just before I had come down, and I had had queried a version of Carolyn's turn before I brought it here out to several agents, and obviously didn't get picked up. But I did get some feedback that. Positive type feedback gave me enough incentive to say, well, maybe we if I work. could focus on it, if I could have the time to oh, not work sixty hours a week, and then I had two the same hours. thing. I I jumped off the bridge without a net, yeah, and I just sat down and wrote my first novel. Yeah, and, and sometimes because that's the best way to do it. You, you have just gotta to, do sometimes it. you have to do it if yeah. you're really if if it's in your soul, you have to write that exactly. Book. And that's what so, it is. It's about what's passionate inside you and writing that out. And Carolyn's turn has been a, a passion of mine for uh, for a while. Which is why that on that particular book you plan you really would like to see it go traditional because of the reach. I, I just yeah, I just want to do it the right way, and right. I don't know what the right, because and right because way of the is. reach. Yes, like, yeah. And so I'm going to go back to your sure. your one that has sold so many copies, Tim on Broadway. Yep. Which is your big? It really is a big hit. How many sales do you have? Fifty thousand of them. Um, well, close? fifty thousand books. I sold about fifty thousand books last year in two thousand fifteen. Not all of that was Tim on Broadway. There's another book that I have out called Marketing Beef, which is actually the 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 erotica. Uh, actually, it's not erotica. It's romance. Okay. It's, it's uh, okay. It's, it's romance for LGBT. Romance. Yeah. Okay. And that sold the most, actually, more than Tim on Broadway. Did and that's the sequel that I'm working on now called um, Another Hot Dog. Another Romance. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's so, the Evan and Dylan. Uh, so story. they bring in some money. But I use that as a sort of uh, as a prompt for the story about this marketing executive who is trying to sell um, uh, beef 
for a beef company in Massachusetts. <laughs> all my st- all my books take place in or have some sort of connection to Massachusetts. So well, I'm do you from. think now that you're down here for a few years, you might start having a Florida connection? I, some of them? you know, I I, I have, and um, but I usually still have a connection because to you the have a stronger stronger more years up there than yeah, you do down yeah. there. Yeah, but it's just sort of one of my things. I just like to write about if I write about. And the marketing, and, then, and you said you have a sequel called Hot Dog. Yeah, yeah. This so is the, the marketing and beef, Dylan. and now he's going to go into the hot, now. Now yeah. the next one's Hot Dog. The next okay. one's Hot Dog, which is more about his dog. <laughs> uh, his dog gets into the uh, the film industry, and um, gets uh, a, a double as as a, as a star golden retriever. <laughs> That's so um, cute. So it's just sort of a, a comedy, a little romantic comedy, sort of light. Um, light stuff, and you do but. like to do the romantic comedies, yeah. You know, even though these are LGBT, they're 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 not they're not hardcore. You're not, not you're not going to go to them to get all hot and bothered. You're going to go to them to, like women do to romances. Yeah, it's like it's a light romance. It's it's um, and you know coincidentally the that group that I mentioned on Goodreads and and a lot of the um, it's it's called. Um, Man on M on M M romance, man on man romance, or male on male romance. Uh, a lot of that is predominantly written these days by straight women, and read predominantly by straight women. So it's really an interesting <laughs> niche. <laughs> so um, they probably write it the way that they think it would be if they were all yeah, women, so and only they them, make a man, and that makes it seem much more sensual and yeah, sweet some of rather them are, than hardcore like men tend to write. Yeah. And some of them are really kind of, well, in, in any romance books. I mean, you can get a little sappy. Very writing. sappy. Women tend to get, in those some romances, of, yeah. can be um, very sappy. Yeah, so I, I try to give it a little more of an edge. Yeah. So, okay, and you just, you are currently working on something else, uh, a new a new romance, but um, it's not Car- Car- it's not Carolyn's turn, because you're pretty much done with that. And I'm done with Carolyn's turn, yeah. Agents. I just published... Um, Soulbound, which was a short story that, about Christmas. That was right. Um, no, it wasn't about Christmas. It's about a, a man who dies, uh, and as another death thing. I guess I'm always right. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I'm always right about death. But a man who dies, and when he's at the pearly gates, he's greeted by the first love of his life, or the only real love of his life, which was a man. And then he went and married a woman, and but, had to but live in his real, whole life. yeah, in real life, he always sort of suppressed that. And that was I, I remember yeah, reading we brought that, that story. To group. Now you also had another one though that you were working on. There was the Christmas story. Yes, uh, one the one night, night one night stand. One night stand. Yeah, is that going to be in anything soon? Or um, do you that, have that was separate? actually published a year or two ago as a short. As a short, but it was on also Kitten. part of an, an anthology. Okay. Through uh, this publishing firm that I work with. Uh, in uh, called Beacon, so it's Beacon in Tracks. a short stories book plus it's on, on plus it's on its Kindle own. by itself. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because yep. you can't you can't really do a whole book on a short story, <laughs> so it's stuck with Kindle, which is a great avenue for people who write short stories. Like mean, yes. they can just put up a short story for ninety nine cents. They get thirty three cents every time it sells. Yeah. And it doesn't cost anything. It's just a wham bam. We're done. Yeah. And you can have a whole bunch of them, and then when you get maybe. 30 or 40 of them, you could have an anthology of your yeah. own. <laughs> yeah, or even when I did uh, Not Sure Boys was only 50, 60 pages. It was three short stories in one. And the th- short stories all had a connection, not only about the North Shore of Massachusetts, but also some characters that sort of yeah, you, showed up. You are, you have, I think it was you that mentioned that there's some publishing companies that do the Kindle, and you've connected with some of those, and they published you at all? You mean like Kindle? Well, Kindle is one you do yourself, really. Yes. But I'm talking about the the romance book. Well, there are small there are small press publishers, and one that I work with is called Beaten Track in the United Kingdom, and that's the one that published One Night Stand. Okay. As part of, so they'll publish it on Kindle. They so they put it up through Create right. Space and or. Whatever they um, they take form. on the expense of they take on the expense and, and in that and specific then, that was and they don't pay you royalties for it do they well that they they do. just pay you a, a, a set no they would pay the royalties entry. that specific book uh, was a donation we we were raising money for the Trevor Foundation okay. which was for kids that get kicked out of their homes for being gay by their parents because their parents can't accept them. So all all my royalties for that went to that foundation, which was a which was a nice cause. 
but no, they, I get. I actually had a deal with Deb, who runs Beaten Track. She published my paperback copy of Tim on Broadway, and we split royalties fifty fifty. Nice. I own the uh, ebook rights and get full. Rights and people back. really have to be careful when they do contracts with anybody and make yeah. sure that their rights come back to them at some point. Yes. Because some publishing True. companies will write a contract and they are forever. You just gave away your rights so that you could get royalties yeah, you, in return. You have really to be, be careful. so careful. Yeah. I, as excited as you might get that a publishing company is willing to publish you and it's not going to cost you a thing, you have to be really, really careful that that you're going to have your rights back within 10 years tops tops and you should probably be looking at more like four to five years you should be getting your royal your your rights to your book back so that if you want to republish it yourself you can but if you sign away your rights you're in trouble uh you know it's it's uh the importance of that is you know you can sell books on amazon but amazon doesn't tell you who bought your book you have no idea. You know, you can say I, know, I could, they I could have sold a hundred books yesterday, but I don't. They know, know who, who bought it. They, they know who and they, bought and it, and they will make recommendations to whoever bought it of other yeah. things that are similar. But it may not be you. <laughs> yeah. So in the sales world, I mean, you want to know who your customers are, so you can get repeats. So you can get repeats. So if somebody bought your book, you want to be able to when you write your your other book, be able to send them a link and say. Buy so me. how do you do that? Do you give away free things? Do you? Yep. Giving away free things is a great idea. Um, so on my blog or on my website, which is really what it is now, it's, I have it's a page that's a blog. But, but you don't want to website. give away a whole book because then you're losing money. Um, I give away, uh, the way I published Tim on Broadway, I, start, I wrote it in uh, episodes. So sort of like a, because Tim is, was sort of fascinated with television and was always was a couch potato. <laughs> and um, so the first episode, of Tim on Broadway, there's five episodes, and those five episodes make the book Tim on Broadway. But episode one is free, um, and I will give that away when people sign up for my email list. So if they go to um, my website, now is episode up, one fu fully formed? I mean, if they read episode one, they have got a full story. They get a full story. It's a it is a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end. So in 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 um, but he solves his original goal. Yep, yep. So we've got a full story. We got a full story. Because I hate it when people just give you like the first third or fourth of their book, first quarter of their book. Yeah. And they leave you hanging. You don't have an ending. You did, the person didn't the, the main character didn't achieve a goal. We don't. We have no. To me, that's you don't know how to finish something. Yeah. So you do finish the goal yeah. set, I mean, but then there'll be the, something to lead you on to the next yeah, episode. Yeah. So it's it's you know think of it like, like he a gets television the job, show. You right. know, he, he they they, Each they one make is a full. they make a uh, they reach their goal. They reach their end, but, but there's something there's else. There's a cliffhanger, so that you right. want to be able to exactly. to read the rest of it. Like and, we do with um, Star Trek. Well, Star Trek was all single episodes, but there would often be something to make you want to see what happens next week. Mm -hmm. And even if it didn't have the cliffhanger, there was enough that you knew there was going to be another adventure. Yeah. So that kind of thing. But you yeah. do finish things off. Um, who used to do that very, very well with the cliffhanger? Oh, all of your... I don't like to, to look at the soaps because that's the exact opposite of what I want. You're looking at episodic TV. Yeah. Like Beauty and the Beast from a couple of years ago. They each At the end of each episode, yeah, they got the bad guy in that particular episode. Yeah. But then at the end of the episode, he was still being chased. Yeah. So you have a... So a, you wanted to you find an out overline, Yeah, you have an overlying storyline and then you have the individual storylines and that's the way to do episodic yes. serial books yep. you need to the, they, they have to have an, a full story there but you also have this override true blood there was a great one yeah i mean she you have the overall each episode well they took each book was a, a season Mm -hmm. But she had a complete episode. You didn't have to, to view the next episode to know what happened in that one. It was a great continuing story yeah. with a serial character. Yeah. Then at the end of the season, you really didn't know what was coming up next next time. And we're really waiting for that next first episode. Yeah. Because it would be a huge cliffhanger or something that we hadn't even seen earlier. And all of a sudden, something new rose up. And it was so much exactly. fun. Yep. Yeah. It's really a lot of fun the way they did that. Yeah. So, where do you see it going from here? You're you're working on Carolyn's turn and trying to get an agent. Yeah. So right now I've been querying um, some agents. Got 
little bit of good feedback. Whether or not, you know, I, I, gave, I gave myself to the end of this year. I may extend it a little bit because I, right. I ended up rewriting my query based upon some, some courses I took and my, rewrote my synopsis. So resending think, that out. I think because you're a very good writer and the fact that Carolyn's turn is your opus almost right now, I think holding out for an agent is the right thing to do, especially because you have something that most agents are looking for, and that is the platform. The fact that you've already sold 50,000 books, I really think an agent will pick you up because they know you can sell your books. That's what I was hoping. And that's the first thing they need to know is you have already sold lots and lots of books yourself, and they know that they can count on you to do it again. So yeah. that's a really important part of we'll getting an yeah. agent nowadays. It's not about how good is he, it's can he sell books. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. You know, it's all about... It's a business for them. As they want to know that they're not going to have to hold your hand and babysit you. You've done this, you're a professional, and they're ready to go with that. Yeah. So I really think you will have good luck getting a traditional Thank Thank agent you. and that's of course the only way to get into the traditional publishing yeah. and once you're there you can be there for a short time or stick stick with it yeah. and let them and continue to, to do all the work exactly but you get less money if they do the work whereas that's the when, thing. yeah you get yeah. way so less we'll you're only getting it's... seven or eight percent of your book I know. and right now you're getting more than 50 percent 70 percent yeah 70 yeah. percent versus seven to eight percent yeah so it's a huge difference but you sell is. so many more with their distribution yeah. if center. they can if they yeah if they can sell they more dis- books well they distribute it across the country that. and they they get the review teams the really the ones that sell the traditional yeah. so it's and they know where to contact the right book groups when you get the with, with the publisher they know True. where to distribute yeah. That's their big yeah, key. Reviews are that's important. really all they have is the reviews and distribution system, and that's what you're paying sixty three percent for. <laughs> it's like kind of right? crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> all it right, is kind of crazy. it was great having you on. Now, Thank what you. do you have? A, let's give your website out. Yeah, the website is uh, www.rickbetancourt.com. So that's spelled that. R I C K B E T T E N C O U R T. C O U R T. C O U R T. That's like yep. full court. Yep. Bet At 10 court. Dot com. Dot com. And what about your Facebook? Facebook is facebook.com slash uh, Rick Betancourt writer. So it's R I C K B E T. If they put it in the Rick Betancourt, they'll probably have Yeah, if they get Rick Betancourt writer, you'll get my page. And then my Twitter handle is R Betancy, which is R B E T T E N C. All right, so they have different ways of seeing what yeah. you've got going on, yeah. and Absolutely. I think they'd be very interested in your blogging. Uh, sure. Because it's that, where do they sign up for your, your um, blog? You go to rickbetancourt.com. You can sign up on the – you can the click blog. and read the blog right there. Uh, you can also go on the sign-up page and sign up for the mailing list. Right now I'm giving away a free um, a $25 Amazon gift card. I raffle that off. Every few months or so. Okay, very so cool. Pick somebody out of random out of my list. So. Well, thank you for being on thank Culture you, Coast, and great. I hope to have you again. Awesome. Thank okay, you. bye-bye. Nightmares. Frightful visions during the night, causing terror and loss of sleep. Daymares. Frightful visions during the day, causing fear and paranoia. Gothmares. Gothic visions that can happen anytime, causing horror and disgust. But sometimes they offer answers. Read Gothmares if you dare. <laughs> Gothmares, a young adult novel by Al Musitano, available on Amazon and fine bookstores everywhere. Village of the Arts, the largest artist colony in the state of Florida, located on 42 acres, includes artists, homes, galleries, gardens, and restaurants featuring handcrafted gifts, fine art sculptures, painting, photography, enviro art, healing arts, books, mystics, and musical variety. A few of the galleries are unique in their offerings. Village Voices specializes in books and art created exclusively by Florida residents. The Dancing Crane Gallery offers fine art, custom jewelry, and unique, innovative art. 
The Village Mystic offers all things metaphysical, meditation, massage, mediums, aromatherapy, psychic, shamans, reiki healing, and the gem mine where you can mine for your own personal treasure. Yoga Arts offers classes or one-on-one coaching. Musicians and bands can be found throughout the area. Many of the artists and musicians offer classes. Restaurants and bakeries provide respite for the weary and magic for the foodies. Visit during the first Art Friday Art Walk and stroll through the shops and galleries enjoying free appetizers, wine, music, and demonstrations. For hours and information, please visit the website at www.villageofthearts.com.